How did you meet the Crewe twins? I met them at the Royal Tottenham. When I, I was 18, I was 16. I was uh, on the ramp in the army when I first met them. And that's how I first met them. What were your first impressions of the Crewe twins then? I liked them very much. You know, they were much like myself. Ronnie Cray, Reggie Cray, Charlie Cray, did you know all three brothers? I know all three brothers, yeah. What would, what would you say was the difference between the three of them as youngsters? Well, Charlie was a very level-headed, sensible person. And Ronnie and Reggie, they were like one person, really. Did you get to know the family at all? Yeah, I knew Violet and I knew Charlie the dad. I was uh, often going in the house. In fact, when I got a bit older, I lived with both of them for about five months. Where did you live? What was the, what was the situation? I lived, was? I lived in Leebridge Road, above a barber shop called Adams, where we had a flat. Um, but at the time, it got a bit crowded, and Ronnie and Ian Barry moved out, and they went to a friend of ours, Charlie Clark, and Marlborough Road, Walthamstow. As time progressed, obviously the, the careers, from the army and boxing. Yeah, they... started to become a bit of a force, you know. Yeah, they... Explain a bit about that. Well, they, they started boxing. Uh, they was boxing at a very early age with twins. Their old grandfather, Cannonball Lee, he'd been, been a boxer for years. And they got him like they knew other boxers. And one of their... Like, who became a very good friend later, was a little fella called Nobby Clark, and he used to box for his father-in-law, and he was like a, a, a gypsy, and he used to go round with a fair and fight anyone for three rounds, and you had to knock him out to win a tenner. Do you actually, do you actually see the creator in the box? Yeah, well, I've seen him several times box. I was there with Ronnie. Punched the referee and got out of the ring and refused to eat. You know, I never ever fought again. Reggie went with him. Who was a better fighter? Reggie. Reggie was a better fighter. Reggie was a more scientific boxer. Ronnie was like a pair of us, you know. What about Charlie Chris? Charlie was a decent boxer. The last fight Charlie had, he'd done it one Christmas time. He fought a fella called Lou Lazar who knocked Charlie out in a few rounds. So after the boxing, obviously they didn't make it as professionals. The craze turned to from, um, you know, have you got any instances where you can remember that, that change occurring when we were first aware of the craze, you know, were going up to the other side of the law? Well, that was never really on the right side of the law, you know. Um, they used to like a row and like a lot of young people do in every major city in Great Britain. You get your little crowds and youths and they'll want to have a fight and be the governor and that's what the twins were like. Right, Chris took over the billiard hall. Um, yeah, they had the billiard, billiard hall and that is uh, where they first made, made their real name. When they went out and fought, some other people in the uh, Black Horse Coaching Horses pub in my land. Where did your involvement start with the careers? Well, I first met them in the uh, in the Royal at Tottenham, and I, I was older than them, and I was on the run from the army, and I sort of got captured, and I'd done me little bit of detention and what have you. And then while, while I was on the run, I got a bull stall. And I was, I could wait for 15, 16 months in a bull stall institution. And when I come out of bull stall, I went back in the army and I immediately went on a run again. And the twins had the uh, billiard or at my end. And I went down to see them on several occasions and they always used to like 
look after me and give me a couple of quid, which was good money in them days. I never had to do nothing. I never done nothing for the money, you know. Ronnie was a uh, quite a generous person, really. If he liked you, he'd, he'd, he'd give you the coat off his back, wouldn't he? You ever nervous in that company? Pardon? You ever nervous in that company? No, I was never nervous in that company. Only once I fell out with Ronnie, and that was over a, a young boy who someone brought, and later he became an household name in British boxing. And a f Nobby Clark brought him one night to a, a flat warming party. A couple of brothers of Tills, one of them took a, a flat of Stamford Hill. And Nobby Clark bought this young boy, and as you know, when he was uh, like young boys, and <coughs> I bought this young boy, and he said he was in strict training and he had to go home because his father said he had to go right home. And Ronnie said to him, We'll phone your father and see if he will let you stay to have a few drinks with us. And as they had no phone in the house, and there was no such thing in them days as mobile phones and that, Ronnie said, Run him up the Manor House station. There's a big bank of phones there, and I took him up the Manor House station. And he phoned up his dad and he came to me and he said, my dad said I've got to go right home because I'm in strict training. So he went and I went back to the party and Ronnie said to me, where's the young fella, the boy? I said, he's gone home, Ron, and he really became annoyed and nasty and called me some bad names like, you know. And, That was it. I, I just went went out and I let his, him cool down a little bit and see him next day. What was it like the next day going to see him after you had a fall? Yeah, he was all right. I, and I said to him, it wasn't my fault. It, it was Nobby's fault because he knew the strength and, it, and, it, and, he, and he shouldn't have brought him and told you what he did. Did you ever see the crew twins fall out with each other? Yeah, I did. I've seen them fall out with each other on a couple of occasions. One night we was in the Grave Morris, and the night before we'd been to the Yasta Club. And at the time they had that Zorba the Greek film out. And Ronnie weren't with us, and we was all having a good evening, dancing, and really enjoyed ourselves. Quite a few of the fun. And the next night, me and Ronnie was in the Grave Morris and we just ordered a plate of beef and they used to put cucumber around the edge of it. And Reggie come in and he picked a bit off my plate and ate it. And then he went to take a piece up of Ronnie's plate and Ronnie plunged a fork into the back of his hand. And later that evening, we went to the uh, Widders and we went upstairs in the public house above the pub. And Ronnie said to Reggie, I'm going to shoot your brother in law. And Reggie said, You do me a favour. And then Reggie said, You do me a favour. And then Ronnie jumped up and he went over to punch Reggie. And Reggie punched him and knocked him down and broke his glasses and gave him two terrible black eyes. And all the firm jumped on him and split him up. And that was it, that was the end of that.